What's up, hackers? Welcome to Hacker Warehouse TV, a great show for InfoSec neighbors. I'm your host, Troy Brown, and in this episode, we're talking to Plore. We met him at the DEF CON 24 press meet and greet and learned about his unconventional and clever approach to cracking consumer safes. Find out why your home safe might not be as safe as you think. Check it out. Hey guys, it's Troy again with HackerWarehouse.tv. Sunday morning at DEF CON 24, and we just ran into one of the speakers here that had a very interesting talk, Plore. So Plore, good morning. Thank you. Good Can you tell us a little bit about what you were doing here at DEF CON? So I was speaking on the topic of high security safe locks, in particular side channel attacks and high security electronic safe locks. Excellent. Yeah. And so when I hear side channel attacks, I think maybe that's coming in through RF, maybe it's coming in through other means. Tell us how you side channeled these safe locks. Exactly. So side channel attacks are using information leakage from the device. So the device is emitting information that the manufacturer didn't intend for it to emit. Okay. So I use monitoring of the amount of current being consumed by the lock and from that, inferring the state of the lock, and from there, being able to recover the key codes that the user had programmed into the lock, thus having the key codes being able to open the lock from outside the safe, completely covertly, with no damage to the safe or the lock, or any evidence that this was ever done. Really, with no damage. So when I think about how you get current out of it, how are you tapping into the source, the power source of the lock? All right, so these locks are designed to have all of their logic inside of the safe. There's no way to access that from outside of the safe, outside of the lock safe. Instead, outside of the safe, all you have is a passive keypad and a 9-volt battery. The battery is user-replaceable or in case it dies. And so in order to mount this attack, you'd remove the battery, which again is totally uh, intended by the manufacturer. From the and outside? From the outside, okay. from the outside of the lock safe. You would put a resistor between the battery and the lock in series. Okay. Now, because of Ohm's law, the more current or less current the lock is drawing, there'll be more or less voltage drop across that resistor. From there, you can monitor that voltage drop on, say, an oscilloscope. Okay. And from there, you can do the inference about this lock state. Okay, and let's talk about that. So you're basically, you're tapping into the 9-volt battery on the outside of it, so you're mm -hmm. not really tampering with it or you're not damaging it anyway. And then you're looking at the oscilloscope, and what are you looking for? So I looked at a couple different locks. One was an older design, one was a newer design. Okay. On the older design, the lock leaked the EEPROM data. As it was, whenever the user enters a code, the lock will need to compare that code to the true code stored in the lock's memory. Now, when it does this, it will need to read that code out of EEPROM, where the code is stored. It will do this bit by bit, kind of like a spy bus. And as that happens, I've noticed that the lock will have more or less current being drawn. And so, as the lock is clocking this data out, mm -hmm. the current will rise and fall. In this particular case, when there is more current being drawn, it equates to a zero. And when there's less current being drawn, that equates to a binary one. From there, you just need to read the ones and zeros off of the scope screen, okay. and you have the key code. That's really interesting. How long did it take you when you first put this research together to really figure this out and know that you had something that you could put out there and try yeah. to make better? So, that happened fairly quickly. In fact, after last year's DEF CON, I decided to pursue this. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it was so simple, perhaps, that I decided to pursue another lock. I thought, this lock was easy enough. I'll try another lock. Mm -hmm. This lock was indeed a lot harder to attack. This one, again, used the power analysis attack. Also, so was, again, the side channel attack. But it also made use of, use of several other vulnerabilities, um, including what's called a timing attack. This is when the lock will take varying amounts of time to do a certain operations. Based on that, you can learn information about in this case, the true state of the true lock key code stored in the lock. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So you, not only did you do the power analysis for one use case, mm -hmm. but now you did some timing. Tell us about what information that it was leaking that you were able to discover with the timing part of the attack. Sure. So a timing attack is when you have a, in this case, you have the true key code read from EEPROM, mm -hmm. and then you have the key code the user entered. The lock will compare those one digit at a time. Mm -hmm. If there's a mismatch, in this case, it will immediately drop out of that loop and go on and do some buzzing and some other things. Mm -hmm. Now, that means that the more key codes, that you, or the more digits you have correct in the key code in sequence, the longer the delay will be ah. until you have that buzzing or other action. Okay, so you're checking different key codes and you know that based on the response that you see through the timing, exactly. that if you're getting the digit right or not. Right, and that helps you really limit the search space. Okay. So, as an example, you might try all the different possibilities for the first digit, zero through nine, while holding the other five digits constant. Ah. Whichever of those values for the first digit has the most delay mm -hmm. is the correct value for the first digit. 
So you don't need to try all the different possibilities for the first digit. With all possibilities for the remaining five digits, you can sequentially discover the true first digit, and then using that, the true second digit, and so on, out wow. to the, the fifth digit. It's really an impactful use case for side channel attacks. It I is. Mean, you're doing both power analysis and you're doing timing to work on a product that most everybody is familiar with, at least, right? So we're talking high security safes here. Yep. Um, what first got you really interested in targeting safes versus other things? Exactly, so I had one of these safes, and so the safes we're talking about are decent safes. These are gonna be commonly found in residences, often gun safes, fairly large. What we're not talking about are the cheap, uh, rather insecure locks that you might find on fire safes or hotel safes or anything like that. Those locks can often be uh, defeated with something like a magnet or a sharp wrap with a hammer, yeah. things like that. So these are decent locks. These are yeah. UL certified, list, listed, I should rather. Okay. Um, and I thought, looking at my safe, looking at my electronic lock, I wonder how secure that is. I yeah. wonder, are there vulnerabilities here that make, would make it more or less uh, susceptible to attack compared to a mechanical lock? So you talk about these high security safes and that they meet UL approval, right? They do. UL standards. Listed, yep. Are there better standards out there that maybe would prevent this kind of side channel attack from happening? There are. So the government, to protect top secret material, we use other types of locks. These are called GSA approved locks. The standard for those are, is FL2740B. Okay. Now this standard happens to describe defenses against many of the things I use to attack these locks. So I think that perhaps we could um, look forward to perhaps having some of these aspects from 2740B integrated into the UL uh, uh, standard. You're here at DEF CON, you're here to speak about high security safe locks. That's right. And then what's the purpose coming out of this? I mean, what are you hoping to get out of this? I mean, really the goal is to improve these devices for everybody. Maybe people who don't even have the skills to uh, investigate them thoroughly. Yeah. But more than that, for the specific case, I would love for the vendor to say, yes, we're so glad we know about this problem now yeah. and we can fix it and we can release better products going forward. And uh, and just, again, make everything better for everybody. Yeah, that's really admirable, actually. You know, you're coming out, doing a talk, you want the vendor to raise the bar. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you guys can make that happen. I okay. hope so, yeah. Right. So what kind of things do you have planned for the future? Do you plan on coming back next year and maybe talking about something else? You know, gosh, I hope so. It was a lot of fun at this DEF CON. Yeah. So I hope to perhaps use the existing research I've done and apply it to other devices, or perhaps explore new things. And awesome. it's, it's just exciting. Right. Yeah. So is there, where can people find more information about your research? Do you have a white paper posted, anything like that, or a website or anything like that they can go to? So one of the great things about DEF CON is that they post all the slides from the presentations. Excellent. So they can go to the DEF CON website and watch those. If they want to watch the actual presentation I did, mm -hmm. at some point DEF CON will post that on YouTube. Okay, I think it's like six months out or something like that. It is a bit of time out, yeah. Okay, yep. well, excellent. Well, thanks so much, Floor, all for right. coming and talking to us today. Great. Side channel attacks are very interesting, and you have a great use case for what you did. So I'm Troy again with uh, HackerWarehouse.tv, and we are here at DEF CON 24 with Floor. Floor, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Troy. All right, appreciate it. Thanks again to Plore. True to Hacker Roots, Plore did not give us his real name, and we have no info on him to share with you. However, be sure to check the links in the description below for examples of other side channel attacks. If you have any questions for Plore, or about side channel attacks in general, let us know in the comments. While you're at it, perhaps give us a thumbs up and share this video with your fellow safecrackers. Once again, this is Troy with Hacker Warehouse TV, and until next time, remember, keep it between the laws.